Hello, I'm Jenny Stewart and I'm Professor of Public Policy at UNSW Canberra. I'm a great enthusiast for qualitative methods in doing empirical research and it's my great pleasure to talk to you today about multi-case methods for doing research in the governance field. You or I owe this presentation to my good friend, Professor Robin Keast who read my paper in Public Management Review on these methods. You'll see the reference to that paper at the bottom of this introductory slide. And Robin suggested to me, and indeed encouraged me, uh, to do a recorded presentation just picking out the highlights of the paper. So let me hasten to add, you still need to read the paper, but hopefully what I'm going to say to you now um, will help you gain a better understanding of it. Let's talk a little bit first about governance. Researching governance is fascinating. Governance, of course, meaning the way we legitimate decisions and how we make decisions in this context. The two ladies in the slide there you'll see are myself, Jenny Stewart, and on my right, Dr Wendy Jarvie, who's my research partner in doing quite a bit of governance related research. It's a good way of getting out into the field and understanding communities. And this is indeed what we were doing when we did some recent work in Moody Parkey in Western New South Wales. Moody Parkey is, I guess, probably the far western two thirds of New South Wales. So it's a pretty big area. And we were looking at how different communities in different locations come to their governance decisions and using multi-case methods to make that comparison. So it won't surprise you to learn that there are some problems in those towns. This is the main street in Walgett, um, heavily uh, boarded up, as you'll see. So some of these communities are very troubled, and we wanted to understand some of the reasons for that and how people were dealing with it. But there's also wonderful community people. Um, that's Maxine Mackay who's the, a member of the Community Working Party in the Moody Parky town of Burke. So that gives you perhaps a little bit of the flavour of field-based multi-case methods in governance research. It's a lot of fun, but it's difficult. And let me just talk a little bit about some of the problems. Multiple case just means doing several cases in the one project. But if we just take a step back and think about the single case um, based research project, it's a good way for helping us to see governance practices because governance is not something that's easy to quantify, um, hence the need for qualitative methods. But if you're just doing a single case study of a governance episode or a set of governance practices, you have this problem of generalizability how far can I actually push my conclusions? Well, in the case of the single case study, not very far. And the blue tree that you'll see there is meant to indicate that sometimes a single case can have peculiar qualities or particular qualities that make it rather difficult to generalise. So let's turn now to the advantages of the multiple case. So all it means is that we're understanding a phenomenon at a number of sites. So governance translates into a lot of uh, different kinds of activities. Say, for example, um, that you're interested in management practice and you're wanting to compare how managers do their work at different sites. Then a multiple case study method uh, comes in handy for doing that. The basis is comparison. I just want to stress that point that you're comparing the different cases. Um, I think it was the great philosopher uh, David Hume said that comparison was at the core of all good um, social inquiry. And there's a big range of possibilities with multiple case study research. So I'm arguing here that you can tackle problems using this method that are very difficult, if not impossible, to tackle uh, simply using the single case study method. Let's look now at the types of multi-case studies. So essentially here I'm getting at the different purposes um, for which you can do multi-case work. 
First we have the exploratory multi-case study. And that's a study which is asking practical questions and pursuing underlying relationships. It's asking the how question um, of research. And an example of that, you'll see the reference at the end of the paper, is uh, Ritter's study of how managers in Germany implemented accrual accounting. The team there simply followed a group of managers at six different sites and just compared um, the problems and practices that they saw at those six sites. So it was an exploratory study. It's not asking anything too deep, but hey, at the same time, if you can understand better how managers work by looking at their work in different sites, you're doing pretty well. Now, the next category is explanatory. So we're going up a step here. This is more difficult because we're asking the why question. And the why question is usually tougher than the how question. But you can get some penetrating results here. And I'd refer you as an example of the explanatory use of multi-case studies to O'Neill's study of e-governance. The reference to that is again at the end of the paper. And it enabled um, this researcher to actually question the notion, which was quite widely spread, um, that e-governance was transformative. When she actually looked at the impact of e-governance, she found that that wasn't actually the case. And, and she um, used the, the multi-case approach to figure out um, both how and why um, that, that was happening. Final category is the evaluative one. And I guess if you're doing your research with um, practical applications in mind, this would be the one that uh, would most likely um, be your objective. So we want to know how we can do this better. And commonly with evaluative multi-case, to, to put it fairly simply, you're comparing um, your cases on the basis of a range of outcomes. Some good, some not so good. So it, it can require a fair bit of daring to do evaluative multi-case, but it does, if it's done well, lead you to be able to answer that question. How can we do this better once we understand the reasons um, for particular variance in outcomes? The advantages. Well, as I've said, comparative um, means that we can use difference. We love difference. We explore and exploit variations in outcomes. In no sense do we constrain our selection on the outcome variable. So we delight in, um, in variation in outcomes in doing multi-case work. Second advantage, we can test or at least if you're doing the exploratory version, you can um, explore a hunch. Now, a hunch is a kind of a hypothesis, but I prefer the less grand word, hunch. Just an idea um, that, that you have. Um, let's say, for example, you think leadership is behind um, variations in outcomes. Well, then, you could do some multi-case work looking at um, different um, levels or styles of leadership and tracing their connections with outcomes. But it is a lot of work, I might add. So that's another reason for being clear about the reasons you're doing multi-case. There are some good how-to books around, and um, Miles and Huberman's work on qualitative research is one of the best, but there are many others. Um, however, the kind of generic um, research methods books tend to be a little bit light on, I think, um, with the multi-case um, methodology. But here's Here's the crunch point. How do we and others know that our work is any good? In other words, if researchers were to take your cases and look at them again, would they come to the same result? Remember that in qualitative, qualitative work, we don't have statistical tests of significance um, to, to keep us honest, um, so, so to speak. What we do have, and what I'm saying in this paper we need to generate, is convincingness in multi-case research. So convincingness is the validity and reliability of the quantitative field, but translated into this uh, somewhat different area. Remember, too, that when you're doing multi-case research, you are the prime research instrument. So understanding these processes and being able to bring them out 
in yourself as a researcher is really key. Let's talk a little bit about convincingness. Obviously, it means that the reader can have confidence in your results. But what does it actually consist of? Well, it means that you have a good research design, plus you have well-handled data relating to process, contingency, and context. So let me just say about process. This means that you need to know or you find out what's going on and you transmit that information both in your research and your writing up of it. Contingency and context are really, really important. So contingency means, you know, what are the external factors doing here? Um, by that I mean like the size of the organisation, its history, the type of work it's doing. Um, they're obviously going to influence because they will vary from one case um, to the next. They will influence um, the results that you see. And context, the history of each case. I can't emphasise enough that you can't just take a snapshot in time. With each case you really do need to know a little bit, bit about where it's coming from, where the people are coming from. And above all, convincingness means being honest about what you did and how you did it. It's very, very tempting to gloss over uh, the bits that didn't work so well in any kind of research, but in multi-case research perhaps in particular. But I think it's often a good idea to make a point um, of the difficulties. After all, often the un it's the unexpected uh, that's the most interesting. So, improving convincingness. I hope you've got the general idea about um, what it is. Um, and I'm arguing that we can always improve our convincingness, so improve the confidence with which readers can approach our work. Now, multi-case research, the data gathering side of it, very often doing interviews. Here's a couple of young interviewers. Um, they're not actually standing on top of the car. They're standing on top of a, uh, a street side structure, but I thought that was just a rather interesting um, photo. So, if you're using interviews, I think it's upon all of us to include the questions that you asked in your written paper so the person who's reading the published version of the paper knows exactly what you asked uh, the people you spoke to. And this is just as important with semi-structured as with highly structured interviews. Second point in improving conving convincingness. Keep going with your interviews or your data collection until you stop hearing new things. So if in interviewing in, a, say, a particular case site, you keep hearing different accounts of what was going on, um, you need to keep going until you can almost predict what people are saying to you. And the reason for that, when you think about it, is fairly obvious, um, because you don't know what you don't know, and um, unless you can feel fairly confident that you've sort of exhausted those possibilities of what may be going on, that could really lead you um, astray in your work. And have a research team and keep talking. There's a big volume of work, even in a two or three uh, case, multi-case project, so you really need to have a team. If you're a PhD student, that can be um, a little difficult, but um, talking, uh, using somebody as a sounding board, your supervisor, um, parents, uh, friends, um, they can really come in handy too. Because you need to talk about how you're doing your work and what's coming out. The process itself will take a long time, months, probably longer, and very often you find you're iterating between what you're learning in the field and the kinds of theories that you may be exploring or the kinds of hunches um, you're, you're trying to um, understand. So you need someone, as I say, to bounce ideas off and you need someone that's going to challenge you a bit and say, well, hey, are you really sure about that? So the research team, however you can put it together, um, is, is very important in, in multi-case research. And finally, just to wind up, remember that good empirical research is desperately needed in public administration and I would argue in management research. 
more generally. It's tough to do, but unless we actually know what is happening in the real world out there, I think very often um, our, our work can be rather tendentious, um, simply based on assertion. And if you read a lot in the literature, um, I think you'll know exactly what I'm getting at there. Be brave. I suppose that means take a risk, a calculated risk, but a difficult question that's partly answered, I reckon, is much better than a banal so-so question that you've dealt with fully. Now, if you're a PhD student, obviously you need to think carefully about how much risk you're taking on. But it's the tough questions that the people out there in practitioner land, or you if you are a practitioner, are really interested in. Now, how important is it to do more um, HR work? Um, are we doing the right things here? Multicase can help you uh, find the answers to those questions. So to wind up, all the best for your project, um, whatever it may be. And if you have any questions you'd, you'd like to send through to me, um, my contact details are available on the UNSW Canberra School of Business website. All the best.